watercolor techniques. So you have watched some videos so far and you have experimented with some different techniques and we're going to go over them hopefully a little bit more in depth to help you uh, understand them a little bit better. So I've got a plethora of supplies out right now and I know you can't see all of them. All you can really see is my paper. So what I have at my desk is a pencil so I can label what I'm doing. Um, I've got a little container which every table will have that has some salt in it. It doesn't have much because you don't need a lot. You need a little sprinkle. Um, I have my watercolors and my watercolor top um, or my tin top, whatever. But I use this as my like mixing palette because sometimes there's colors in here that let's say I want a blue green or whatever. I can mix it in the top or a pink. I can mix white and red together and make a pink. So or purple because there is no purple in here you guys so you're gonna have to make your own purple if that's what you choose to do um, I also have a little cup of water which you will be sharing with the person next to you I have a piece of paper towel that I already spilled on my water on and then I have a couple different size brushes so I have this big one here. It's what I refer to as a fluffy brush because it is very fluffy. This is specifically for watercolor um, because it holds a lot of water, a lot of liquid, which is what you want um, when you're doing watercolor and you want it to hold that. Um, I have a flat brush, which is one of my favorite brushes for details and for staying inside lines. And then I have a sort of a detail brush. It's very skinny. Um, it's really nice for those little areas that you may need to get in a little um, a little paint or you want to do a technique on top or whatever. So I do have these three different brushes. You don't have to have them all the time with you, um, but they're just good to know. So we're going to go through a couple of different techniques. I'm going to write down what we're doing. What I would like you to do is to watch me do a technique and then I want you to, to stop the video and then do it yourself press play, watch the next technique, and so on and so forth, okay? So I am doing it on regular paper just like you. It's not watercolor paper, um, which is much easier to use, but for practice purposes, we don't wanna use watercolor paper because it's so expensive. So we're just gonna use regular paper. When you get to the watercolor paper, you, you will be able to see um, the difference in your blending and how it holds water and all that stuff. It's just really, really nice. But for right now, this is you're gonna be doing this in your sketchbook. So the first thing we're gonna do is wet on wet. So what I would like you to do is take a brush and you're gonna um, dip it in your water. So I'm dipping it in my water and I'm gonna make a box, which I know you can't see because it's just water, but you're gonna make a box of water. Now I'm putting two layers of water on because I want it to have a good amount of water. You can probably see that starting to come because my paper's so um, soaked right now. I can see that there are certain sections I don't have a good amount of water, so I'm putting water on there. I'm going to pick a color from my, I'm just going to pick a blue for right now. I My brush was already wet, so um, that helps, but I'm going to make it more wet because I really want this to be wet on wet. So wet means I have wet paper and now I have a wet brush. So you can see it's wet enough that it spreads. Um, I'm actually going to get a little bit more water here. And when you do this wet on wet technique, you should have areas that pool. Okay, so that means that those like really dark blue areas, that's pooling of the color. Um, you will be able to, and I want you to try this, I want you to pick up your paper and tilt it. And wherever your edge of your box is, your paint should stop. It shouldn't go past that. Now I'm not turning my paper like completely on like straight up and down. I'm just tilting it and you can see that it's pooling right there. Um, that's good because sometimes we don't want all of this extra water everywhere so you can tilt your paper and it'll go to a certain spot. All right so that is pretty easy. Wet on wet. So I'm going to label that. Wet on wet. So I had a wet brush on wet paper. Pretty easy, right? So the next one is going to be wet on dry. So that means I have a dry piece of paper and I have a wet brush. Got a little too much water there. I gotta dab it off on my paper. So I have a dry piece of paper and a wet brush. All right, so you can see the difference and how the paper is reacting a little bit. 
Um, I don't get a nice even coat. You can see some of my brush strokes. Um, again, if I tilt the paper, my water will pool wherever I want it to tilt, wherever I want it to go. So it's right there. Now, there are times when you don't want that. So you're gonna use a technique called thirsty brush. So you're going to squeeze off all the water, get all the water off with your um, paper towel and you're gonna come in with, I mean, it's the same brush I used, but it's dry and it sucks up all of that stuff. So it sucks up that pool of water and now it's nice and even. So wet on dry wet on dry, okay? Um, I am afraid that my paper is too thin. So we're gonna try a couple different techniques, but they may not work. Your paper might be thinner. This is like computer paper. Hopefully your sketchbook paper is a little bit thicker than mine. Um, so we're gonna do a couple different techniques. I want to, uh, we're gonna come back to wet on, actually we'll come back to wet on dry because I think it'll, dry a little bit faster. We're going to do another technique on that one. So leave that box there. I want to do some wet on wet, but I want to do some blending. So I'm going to grab some water again. Actually, I'm going to make two colors wet in my sketch in my pan right now. So I have blue and I want to take another color because we're going to take two colors and blend them together. So I have blue that's already wet and I think I'm going to pick green, maybe this lighter green. Be um, mindful of what colors you are putting together. I will let you know that complementary colors will not look good together. So colors like blue and orange, red and green, purple and yellow, when you blend them, they will turn like a brownish, grayish color and it's not gonna be what you want. So now I've got my two colors that are um, wet, which is gonna help me. So I'm gonna do a wet on wet blend. And I'm going to, again, make a sort of a longer box because I'm going to have two different colors and make my paper wet. I'm going to do it again, add more water. My paper really soaks up the water, so I've got to make sure that I've got a decent amount of water on my paper. You can see it spreads too. This is not good paper to work with. But hopefully I'll be able to show you the challenges that come with working with thin paper. So I'm putting my blue down on one side. I'm gonna rinse my brush out and I'm gonna get my green. I'm gonna put my green down on another side. Now this is a really light green, so I'm gonna put a couple layers on. Okay, and I'm going till they almost touch. They don't exactly touch completely. Okay, so you wanna leave some white space in between. Then what I'm gonna do is I am sort of taking off some of the water of my brush. I don't need it super soaking like I've had before. I'm gonna get my brush that has green on it again because green is my lighter color so I think it's gonna blend um, quicker than the blue would like it's not gonna infiltrate the blue too much so if you're doing like orange and yellow maybe pick your yellow you want to pick a lighter color to help you blend so I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna take my green and I'm gonna go back and forth like this all right so I'm taking it and trying to get that blue to go back and forth now the blue is not really moving so well and I have a feeling it's because my thin paper so I'm gonna take a little I dabbed my um, paintbrush in my blue a little bit. I'm gonna take my blue and sort of take it into the middle again. There we go. Now it's blending a little bit more and I'm getting that blue green in the middle, which is perfect. All right, so you may have some areas where you need to sort of smooth it out on this side. So I took my brush and I dabbed it on my paper towel. I'm getting off some of the paint color. I'm also making sure that it can blend because um, you don't wanna have I don't wanna have too much blue going into the green or else then it won't blend. All right, so now I have blue to blue green to green, which is perfect. Um, but again, I don't like those pools of water. So I'm going to dry my brush off and I am going to come in here and suck it up with a thirsty brush. You guys, thirsty brush is like one of the most amazing things ever. If you get paint somewhere, you don't want it. Like I've got paint splatters over here, which I don't care because it's practice. But if I really didn't want them on there, I can take a, a clean brush and suck them up. And they're not gonna go away completely. They might if you get them right away. Like mine have been sitting for a little bit and my paper stinks. Um, but Thirsty brush is awesome. You can add texture on top with it depending on how much you have, but it it's just 
a fantastic tool that I don't want you to forget. You have too much of a color, suck it up. If your color went somewhere, like when you get to your final, you're gonna be trying to keep your color inside of an area. Uh, if it goes outside of that area, get a thirsty brush right away. Clean water, thirsty brush, scoop it up so that it doesn't um, taint the, the page too much. Um, so this is a wet on wet blend, okay? So this is a wet on wet blend. So isn't, isn't that pretty? So you can see this is starting to dry a little bit. I might go like this because I know the back of it's a little wet because we want to use that still. Um, I am going to... I'm rinsing my brush again. I'm gonna do another area, and I'm just gonna do a little square, little square of water, okay? I wanna do the salt technique now. Let's try that one. So for the salt technique, you do need a good amount of water because if the salt has nothing to soak up, then it's not gonna work. I'm just gonna go back to my blue because it's already wet. No point in making other colors wet right now. It's just practice. So I take my blue and look at all that water pooling. So that's not bad. I don't want so much of it. So I'm gonna take a thirsty brush again and I'm gonna suck up some of it. I do want some extra water on here. With salt, you want some water. So you want some pooling, okay? So I'm just gonna take a pinch, literally just a little bit and I'm gonna just sprinkle it on top. And hopefully you can see the areas where the salt is soaking it up. I don't need a lot. Um, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Now you leave it like this overnight. You don't touch it or anything, you let it dry. If you don't have enough liquid, the salt has nothing to soak up. So when you get it the next day, you may not be able to see anything. But if you do have enough liquid and enough color, okay, so that's important too. You can, I would suggest not using salt for one of the lighter colors. I would use it for darker, it's gonna show up better. Not that you can't use it for the lighter colors, but it's not gonna show up as much, I should say. Um, you let it sit overnight, let it really soak up that pigment, soak up that water, and then in the morning, when you come back or afternoon, you can brush it off, because it should be dry, and you'll be good to go, okay? So it's gonna give you a really cool um, effect, and again, you don't need a lot of it. Um, I have just a barely any on there, which is okay. If I wanted to, I could probably add a tiny bit more, but I don't want too much. Um, all right, we are going to do, um, oh, paper towel. This paper towel technique may not work because my paper's so thin, but I want you to try it anyway. So again, we're gonna make another wet on wet box. You can see my um, water's getting sort of dirty here because it's blue and it's not clear anymore. So I'm gonna do a little box of blue here. soak up some of this because I want sort of a darker color so I'm gonna soak up some of it and I'm actually going to put another layer of blue on okay and I'm not gonna get my brush wet again I'm gonna just go back into my blue so there's not see how it's darker because I don't have as much water on my brush anymore there we go that looks much better all right so I'm gonna take a piece of my paper towel even my paper towel is like soaking wet right now which yours is probably also if you need to get up and get a new piece of paper towel go ahead so I'm gonna take a piece of paper towel it doesn't have to be big and I'm gonna scrunch it up so it has like funky cool texture on this side and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna lift up this color and I'm gonna get a different kind of texture here. So there's darker areas, lighter areas, um, but you get some really cool textures with the paper. Holy cow. All the... Whoa, sorry about that. Back to it. Um, the lights went out. So you're gonna get a really cool texture with the paper towel effect, okay? Um, can you hear my squeaky chair? It's crazy. We're gonna do a technique right now on the wet on dry, because it's mostly dry. Um, hopefully it's a little bit, my salt is not really, I don't know if I need more pigment, I don't know. Or maybe I just have to wait till tomorrow. Probably just have to wait, or it could be my paper. 
we're gonna take a different brush. So my fluffy brush is very wet right now. I don't want it. I want one of my other brushes. It doesn't matter what brush you use. And we're gonna do a technique called dry brushing. So dry brushing is when your brush is dry. You can use a brush you've already used before too. So if you've been using like a flat brush and you wanna use it still, go ahead. Um, you want your brush that's mostly dry. Okay, I actually should probably get this a tiny bit wet and you're going to dip it in some color. So I'm just gonna use, I wanna use a different color than my, than my blue, right? Because if I put blue on top of blue, although this blue might get darker, I'm gonna do a different color. Let's say red. Red would be a great color to put on top. So I am gonna make my brush a little bit wet. I just got it a little bit wet just because I haven't gotten the red wet at all. And then I'm gonna go into my palette here and I'm going to, now it's not soaking wet, my brush is not soaking, there wasn't a pool of water in it. I'm getting some pigment on my brush. Okay, you can see it's red now. I'm then going to take my paper towel and I'm going to wipe off this color on my paper towel, just a little bit, okay? I just don't want it soaking with red. And dry brushing is when you take it and you do a dry brush, it's not completely soaked, on dry paper. All right, and this is really, really good for um, texture techniques. You can see that my color is not like solid. See all the little areas in there? It's not solid. Um, so this is great for adding texture on top. If you want it to be a little bit more solid, you can totally do that. That's not to say that you can't make this solid. So I added a tiny bit of water on my brush, but again, not a lot of water. And I'm adding a lot of pigment onto my brush. It's like I can do some lipstick or something. And um, so dry brushing, again, is dry on dry paper. You can use it on dry paper, but look at that. It's just a different way to add watercolor and it doesn't spread because there's not a lot of water. It's very defined, I should say. Um, but it's really, really nice. I typically use it for more of like a texture quality on top of another color. Uh, but it's completely up to you. So we're gonna put some arrows to the red and we're gonna say dry brush. Okay, let's see here. We did wet on wet, wet on dry. Remember wet on wet is wet brush, wet paper. Wet on dry is wet brush, dry paper. Paper towel is wet on wet and then you take your paper towel and you dab it. Remember to have a good amount of pigment on there. Wet on wet blend, wet paper, wet brush, two colors on each side, leaving space in between, pushing them together very gently in the middle, going back and forth, blending them. Then we did the salt, which is wet on wet again, good amount of water, good amount of pigment, put it on there, let it dry. And then we did dry brushing, which is a dry brush on dry paper, not having a lot of paint on your brush if that's what you choose, but you can choose to have something a little bit more intense and um, defined. That's the word I use, defined, if you would like that. But these are really great techniques. Oh, one last technique we talked about, but it's not really something you can write down, thirsty brush. Please use a thirsty brush. Um, one last tip before we are done with this. If I was doing this on my final and I did this area here and I wanted to do another area next to it, I would not, I'm gonna say it again, I would not paint next to this area until the next day. The reason is, is because this is wet and this section will be wet and they will blend. So if you have two areas that are next to each other that you do not want to blend, do one one day, let it dry and do the other one the next day it's going to make things look a whole lot better. Because remember, the water stays in that little area, but if you get water on this and they blend, because they're gonna bleed a little bit because it's wet, if that bleeds into each other, let's say you have orange over here, because they're great colors to put next to each other because they make each other stand out. But if you do an orange over here and then you have your blue and they start to blend, you're gonna get this really muddy, yucky color that you don't want. So do one section, Move on to something on the opposite side of the paper if you're done with this and keep doing that and then wait till it's dry and come back and do the section next to it, okay? Um, but that, those are some, 
some tips I have for you. So hopefully you got the gist of these. I hope your paper is better than mine and your salt turns out a little bit better. I really think this paper is not good for salt. Um, but please work on these and uh, work on making your own color, really. Use the top of this. Make a teal, make a pink, make a gray even or whatever, but use this. My only request is, is that when you are done using this, you just take a paper towel and wipe it out because if you don't, it gets all wet and then the top gets stuck to the bottom. So then we have a hard time getting it off. So just wipe it out, clean it out before you're done for the day. And that is all I have for you. Hopefully this helped and uh, will get you to have your final just looking super fantastic.